This is Springfield, SA35, versus a comparison video. Before we start, let's give a quick shout out to our friends at Daryl's Gun Shop and Range. Thanks, Daryl's. You guys rock. We really appreciate you letting us get video there today, instead of us having to be out in the freezing, dense fog like we would have had to otherwise. Again, thanks. We really appreciate your awesome facilities. And now, let's hit the range. Okay, we are going to do... Take that off. SA35 against the Beretta 92. Uh, we're set up here right now at 5 yards. Today is silhouette target. And what we're going to do, we're going to start with 15 rounds. This is Norma MHP defensive ammo to start the day. I'm going to do 15 shots with the Springfield SA35 first. And we'll start at center mass. Here we go. I might say that's a shooter. Yeah. Okay, now we'll do 15 through our Beretta 92. I'm going to aim for the number 8 above the uh, center mass so that we can see if we can tell a difference. Now this is technically a Wonder 9, so we will do the first shot double action like you would carry it. Here we go. Pretty easy to tell which one is the, the double action shot on that target. Looking at our full size silhouette target, which keep in mind this was only at 5 yards, so nothing spectacular as far as distance. So we would expect to see very good groups on the target. And with both firearms, we do see, for me, what I'm going to consider very good groups. So keep in mind the one shot on the right hand shoulder there. That's very obviously our single or double action shot, the first shot with the Beretta. Obviously, I would need to practice quite a bit with the double action trigger to get back into use with that. But hey, it still hit the silhouette. Good thing for full size silhouette targets. Moving on. Okay, I pushed the target back. Now we're at 10 yards. And I've only loaded 10 in each magazine to make it easy on us. We're going to do the same thing 10 shots with the SA35 and 10 shots with the Beretta 92FS. With the Springfield this time, I'm going to do the 10 shots at the head on our target. Here we go. And I might even double tap the last four of them. on the height. Now we're going to do a couple double taps. Okay, for the Beretta, we're going to do 10 shots again. I'll do the same thing. The first six sort of stand alone and then we will do the last four double taps. I'm going to aim at the eight that would be below the center mass, sort of at the belly button. First shot will be double action. Here we go. I'm going to leave the picture 
for our target analysis here zoomed out so we can appreciate the difference between the 5 and 10 yard groups. As we see at 5 yards, very good groups, very tight, right on target, right where we want to be. Now at 10 yards, our groups have opened up noticeably, though I think we have comparable groups with both firearms. And I think that makes sense with the single action triggers and very similar single action trigger style on them that are at about four and a half to five pounds. So uh, very similar with similar sights. So performance for me is very similar. Similar. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So Freddy gets his biscuits. Okay, ready? Okay, let's take another look at another firearm against our Springfield SA-35. We're going to do nine shots with the SA-35, and then I'm going to shoot nine shots out of a Springfield, this is a Ronin 1911 that is in 9mm. Let's see how we do uh, with one versus the other. Here we go, starting with the SA-35, and we'll do center mass, nine shots, here we go. an okay group maybe a little low but that's just me and now we're gonna do the Springfield 1911 Ronin 9 millimeter we're gonna shoot at the number eight that is above the center mass here we go Seems like a comparable group from here. From seven yards away, maybe comparable, but I'm saying with the Ronin, I did a slightly better group there. Let me give you a different perspective on that. That's going to be tough for the high power, the Springfield SA-35 to top. That's going to be tough for the SA-35 to top. I think all nine are in the 10 ring, or at least the white. I should get a picture of that in my head. Yeah. That Ronin has really nice sights on it. It does. Combination of the sights and the trigger, I think, make that a very formidable 1911. And actually, it's funny how when you make your first shot really good, it gives you confidence. Oh, big time. Because when I did the first two shots, I thought, oh, I'm going to nail this. Yeah, you were right. I was like, oh. And you probably heard me whistle after your first shot. I was like, oh, I'm screwed. <laughs> That's a very good group too. You know that that shot there in the throat? The neck I knew I pulled that as soon as I did it. Now normally we don't 
uh, reset targets and cameras between shooters, which is why you don't see the multiple camera angles when the crew's shooting. But we decided to leave 360 cam running here today because, well, I knew the crew was likely to shoot these firearms better than me, even though they're not the ones on camera most of the time in these handgun reviews. Now, as a result, we were then able to use their targets in the video, which is awesome. And what we see here is with their Ronin grouping, here we're zoomed in a little bit so we can see both. The Ronin grouping is the center mass target where all their hits are in the white. Now they called done. They're like, I'm done for the day. I'm not shooting anymore. I can't beat that grouping. I convinced them to do one more magazine through our Springfield SA-35. So that way we would have a more usable video for that. And as we see, they followed up their Ronin grouping with a almost as good grouping with our SA-35. Now I think the difference between those two groups from shooting these firearms myself and then talking with the crew, it comes down to, as we talk in some of these uh, clips, a combination of the 1911 style very light single action only trigger on the Ronin. And it also has more of what I'm going to say target style sights. I'll try to superimpose a picture of it here. Uh, though what I mean by that, it has a fiber optic front sight, red fiber optic, very easy to see. It's almost a pinpoint fiber optic sight. And then a very easy to pick up rear two white dot sight. So you get a very good sight picture with that Ronin. And the ammo that we're shooting here today pretty much lines up spot on with where those sights are. So we get very good groups between where the sights are, the easy to pull single action only trigger on the firearm and then with it being a all metal firearm even though the frame has an aluminum alloy frame it's still quite a hefty firearm so it does absorb recoil well in a very similar regard to our Springfield SA-35. Moving on. Okay we are going to do one last magazine through the SA-35 versus the 1911. I'm going to do SA-35 nine shots at the head of our target here at seven yards. Here we go. Now we will do nine shots through the Springfield Ronin 1911 nine millimeter. I'm gonna do at the number eight at the belly beneath the bullseye. Here we go. Looking at our target for one final time here today, while I think we can say all of our hits are on the target, which is always good, one thing I think we can say is that as we've shot the Ronin more here today, I've gotten more comfortable with it, and our groups have tightened up to where we would say they're on, say, the good end of things, whereas with our SA-35, we're still working on improving our trigger and our sight picture on that to get to the good group range on it, but still... As far as accuracy or reliability goes, 100% reliability with all the firearms and ammunition we tried today, which is always a good sign. We always enjoy it when things work 100% reliably. We have arrived at the talking points for our video today. To try and improve the quality of our talking point segment, I'm going to be working from a script, so you'll have to bear with my teleprompter action. We previously went over the SA-35 in detail in our first range report video on this firearm. We're going to revisit a few details for those who have not seen that video. A link to that video will be included. The SA-35 is a short recoil operated tilting barrel semi-automatic 9mm Luger pistol. It is considered a modern clone of the Browning High Power. It is 7.8 inches long, 1.32 inches wide, 4.8 inches high and weighs in at 29.44 ounces. The slide and barrel are a forged steel with a matte blued finish. 
It has a 4.7 inch stainless steel barrel. The firearm has a white dot front sight with the tack and rack, drift adjustable for windage rear sights. The grips are a checkered walnut, a manual thumb safety, magazine release, and slide release are on the left side of the frame. Now one thing I've mentioned, the Browning High Power was the first 9mm firearm to use a double stack magazine. The SA-35, which is a clone of that Browning High Power, comes with one 15 round magazine. The original High Power would have had a 13 round magazine, though from what I understand, they did test even magazines up to 16 round capacity way back then. We're going to shift gears for a moment and discuss the 1911 now. The 1911 we fired today was the Springfield Ronin 1911 in 9mm. The crew thought it would be a good one to bring alongside to shoot against the SA-35 when they found out we would be testing one here today. This is another firearm that we have previously done a first range report upon, though we are again going to go into some details for those who have not seen that video. We will try to include a link to that video here as well. The Springfield Ronin 1911 in 9mm is also a short recoil operated tilting barrel semi-automatic pistol chambered in 9mm. The 1911 is a John Moses Browning design who also co-designed the high power. Both firearms you would use what has become known as the Browning short recoil tilting barrel action. The main difference between what is on the 1911 and the high power is the 1911 has what is called a tilting link cam action whereas the high power has the linkless cam action. Firearms like the CZ-75 also use the linkless cam short recoil tilting barrel action like that of the Browning high power. Getting into some of the numbers, the Ronin is 7.9 inches long, 1.27 inches wide, 5.5 inches high, and weighs in at 31 ounces. It has a 4.25 inch forged stainless steel match grade barrel. The slide is a forged carbon steel, while the frame is a forged aluminum alloy. The firearm has a high visibility red fiber optic front sight with a two white dot tack and rack rear sight that has a drift that is drift adjustable for windage. The Ronin in 9mm comes with a single nine round magazine. It can use any of the standard size 9mm 1911 magazines. This is not true, however, for the newer Ronin EMP, which has a slightly different magazine. Both the 1911 and the High Power use single action only triggers, though they are slightly different single action only triggers. On a 1911 style trigger, usually there is little to no take up and over travel. The trigger pull is typically short with a crisp break. This is true of the Ronin we're shooting here today. The single action trigger on the SA-35 is closer in style to the single action trigger on a single action double action firearm like say the Breda 92FS we're going to discuss here in a moment, in my opinion. As it were, both the SA-35 and the Ronin that we fired today have a trigger pull weight of approximately 4.8 pounds. However, the trigger on the Ronin has a shorter, crisper feel to it. The SA-35 has what I'd consider a very smooth and crisp trigger for the style difference. If it were a single action, double action trigger, I would have put it among the smoothest single action triggers of any of the factory single action, double action triggers that I've used thus far. Some of that likely has to do with the lack of a firing pin block safety. Now, if we were, if we were trying to be period correct, we probably would have used a 45 ACP 1911 against our Springfield SA-35 rather than a 9mm one. However, with the trends of today, we felt like this was a fair comparison. Mass-produced 9mm 1911s didn't seem to be a thing until maybe the 1990s or early 2000s, though since then we have seen the rise of even the 2011 a double stack 9mm 1911 style firearm. In the future, we will be revisiting this 1911 comparison using a 45 ACP caliber 1911, and we'll probably even be doing one using a modern 2011. Let's shift gears one more time and take a look now at the Breda 92FS. In keeping with previous trends, this is another firearm we have previously re reviewed on the channel. 
but we will be revisiting some numbers for our newer viewers. The Breder 92FS is a open slide, short recoil, delayed locking block action firearm. The one we're shooting in the video today is chambered in 9mm. The Breda 92FS is the first true Wonder 9 in our discussion today, and it is also a firearm that features a different action type, locking block versus tilting barrel. Breda says the open slide plus the locking block action make for faster cycling time with exceptional reliability that all but eliminates stove pipes. Another notable difference with a 92FS is the 92 uses direct feed magazines. There is no feed ramp between the barrel and the magazine. It does use similar double stack magazines as introduced by the high power 50 years before. Getting into the numbers, the 92FS is 8.5 inches long, 1.37 inches wide, 5.4 inches high, and weighs in at 34.4 ounces. The firearm has a 4.9 inch steel barrel. The frame is an aluminum alloy, while the slide is steel. The firearm has the Brunichen finish. The standard 92FS, like we're shooting here today, has the three dot sight setup. The front sight is a fixed frame integrated white dot sight. The rear sight is a double dot drift windage adjustable anti-glare sight. The firearm should be able to do a 10 shot group of three inches or less at 50 meters to match the Army performance trials it has passed previously and numerous times before. The, the Breda 92FS has numerous appealing features. A reversible magazine release, ambidextrous safety and decocker. All the factory parts within the same model are interchangeable. It is very accurate, reliable, and easy to shoot. Now all three firearms we are shooting here today have had a long and distinguished history. The 1911 has been in active military use somewhere in the world since 1911. The High Power has been in active military use somewhere in the world since 1935. The Breda 92FS, or M9, has been in active military service anywhere in the world since 1985. All of those are still in active military service somewhere or police service to this day. Now, while it is true that some militaries or police have started to migrate to firearms like the SIG P320, for example, there are still numerous holdouts who continue to use one of the three we're looking at here today. And I think that's for, you know, any number of reasons. The Breda 92FS is the only true Wonder 9 in our video today. The double action trigger at 10 and a half to 11 pounds feels quite firm at first. It does have the advantage of being a smooth double action trigger, however. On video, I did not represent it nearly as well as a properly trained and competent shooter would do. When it comes to the single action trigger, all three firearms we fired today have a trigger pull weight off my gauge between four and a half and five pounds. I would say that the single action triggers on the Beretta and the SA-35 felt fairly similar in terms of their trigger pull style. While we think the single action 1911 style trigger is more preferable in terms of our group, others will certainly gravitate towards that single action, double action style trigger. Preference and practice will be the biggest factors as far as preferred trigger style with regards to these firearms. All three, historically, have proven to be extremely capable. Circling back to the Springfield SA-35, much like the 1911 and the Breda 92 designs we compared it to, the Browning high power design remains an effective platform 88 years now after first being introduced. Other service weapon of its age and a design that still remains relevant almost a century later, I think the SA-35 represents a great option for anybody who wants to add a high power to their collection and is either waiting to find the right one or can content to go with a very good functional clone. From what I heard today, when doing the gun store circuit, they are made in batches. So if you see one in store and hope to see it the next time you go, you might not. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, 
Have a good day.